Doubts don't decide destinies. Doubts don't decide destinies. You know, in Mark 9, there is a story about a little boy who is possessed by a demon, and, and there's a real concerned dad in the situation, and he hunts down Jesus, and, and, and he tells Jesus, Jesus, I just, I just need you to help my little boy. I need you to, to fix this. And in front of a whole crowd, he asks Jesus, if you can, if you can, Jesus, would you please do this for my son? And this is what Jesus said in response to it. Mark 9, 23 and 24. Jesus said, what do you mean, if I can? Like, what are you talking about? Anything is possible if a person believes. And the father instantly cried out, we're told, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Here's the thing about life with God. We don't live by fact, we live by faith. We don't live by fact, we live by faith. When the father asked Jesus to help him with his unbelief, he's not asking him to take something that makes no sense and make it make sense, okay? Like sometimes people do that with God. We ask him to irrationally replace things in our lives. Like people who are about to eat a whole bunch of KFC and Oreos and six pack of Mountain Dew, we're like, Lord bless this food to our bodies. Help us to be nourished by the bountiful food we have before us. Take what is horrible for us and turn it into carrots and broccoli, Jesus, right? Neither Thomas nor his dad are asking Jesus to change the ride. Did you catch that? They're asking for his presence while they're on it. And we're going to talk about this more in this series, but I want you to hear me say it now. God gave you a brain, and he expects you to use it to process, to grow you, to learn, to mature you, to reason to help you make sense of the world around you, help you make sense of your faith. Faith is not an unreasonable thing. Overcoming unbelief isn't turning off your eyes or your ears or your brain and running into the battle like you're in Braveheart, like freedom, ah! right? That, that's, that, that's not faith, that, 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 that isn't just scary, that's a little crazy, okay? Freedom from doubt isn't saying this isn't scary and only cowards are scared to ride this ride. You know what overcoming unbelief is? It's trusting that no matter what is discovered, no matter what is found, no matter what is happening, either now or in the future, life might be going well, life might be going terrible. Discoveries might get made that weren't predicted in the book of Revelation, and maybe they weren't documented in the book of Genesis. World events can come and go. People might hurt me deeply and cause me pain. In the middle of all of my experience of people, I might lose some that are close to me. Sickness might take a hold of me or somebody that I love. But the prayer of the Father wasn't heal my little boy because I need it to make sense. I need it to be rational in my brain. Make the ride not scary. Turn Everest into a little molehill, a small rise on the horizon instead of this giant mountain that's in front of me. Just take it away. The prayer of the Father is help my unbelief. Help me to live like I really do believe that no matter what happens, come hell or high water, this world is a perfectly safe place for me to be. Reassure me that God is still God and I am still not. Help me to remember when it feels like I'm falling and the world is spinning and the height is more than I'm comfortable with that you're not going to let me fall out of the car. That in your word you say you will not let my foot slip. You will not let me stumble no matter how fast the ride is, no matter what twists and turns it takes. You've still got me. 
Doubt is not a determiner of destinies. It is the process by which we work out our faith in real time. That's your Everest. That's your Everest. It isn't the ride itself. It's living like no matter what happens on the ride, he's still with you. He's still got you. And although the feelings that come with that height are terrifying, this ride is a perfectly safe thing for me to get on. But what if they, but what if I, but what if he, but what if she, but what if they, but what if the, 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 the things that are coming and I don't know what the future is and I don't, I don't get what's happening around me. What if all of it, what if your questions that are beating you up and keeping you sidelined are the moments Jesus can say, listen, put your hand here. Put your hand over here. Let me show you this. What do you mean if I can? What do you mean if I can? For most people, the process of wrestling with doubt, it's more like my experience of Everest. I got a little farther this time than last time. Second time through, I got a little bit farther. Maybe the next time, I'll I'll actually let the thing lock down on me and take off with me and it. God help me. Right? Our experience of God comes in degrees of trust that are gained over time because that's that's how relationships work. It, it, It comes through wrestling with it and processing it. So here's what I want you to do today. This week, I want you to practice Stop beating yourself up about it. Stop it. Faith isn't freedom from doubt. Faith is the freedom to know God in the middle of doubt. Okay? It is the freedom to walk with God through the doubt. It's the ability to take it a little farther with him and then a little farther with him. And okay, I'm going to go another level. Jesus, oh boy, here we go. That's the process of faith every time you wrestle with it. So as you walk out of these doors today, these ones directly in back of you, I want you to understand that this ride is leaving the queue. This is the queue. You're going out to the ride right here. And you're heading out to the track where the roller coaster of your week is waiting for you. It's going to start as soon as you leave. Some of you are like, I'm just going to stay for an extra donut. (laughs) Maybe a little more coffee. and Hang out in the queue for a little while longer. That's okay. It's okay to wrestle with what you're wrestling with. All of us are here with you. You're not alone in it. We're walking it through with you. Listen to me. And this includes you. This includes you individually. It doesn't matter how dark your life is, how, 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 how messed up things have been. Anybody who asks Jesus to wrestle through it with them, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. What do you mean, if I'm able? What is this if you speak of? If I'm able, if I can, if I'm willing. The man conquered sin and death, but somehow your doubts and struggles are too complicated for him. They're not. You may have questions. Come to him. You may have doubts. Still come to him. You may have insecurities. You come to him. You may have brokenness going on in your life. You come to him. Your life may be a huge mess. You come to him just as you are. You call on his name and you stop apologizing for your struggle. You embrace it. We deep dive into it. And you don't apologize to me. The only one that is missing out on the ride that's out there, that it could be, the only one that's missing out is you.